Happy Sunday, dearest friends in Christ. Today is the 23rd day of the month of May, year 2021. The Universal Church celebrates the Pentecost Sunday. The theme for our reflection today is Come, O Holy Spirit, come. Bring love into our world. I had the story of a priest who preached a one line homily for over six Sundays consecutively. His homily was just one line. He would say, Children of God, let us love one another. The people were fed up with this one line homily over and over again, such that they had to complain to him. In response to their complaint, the priest said, Go ahead love one another, then I will stop preaching on it. A very, very appropriate answer if you ask me. Living in love is the only way to show that we are indeed transformed. For me, the only wound that the world has is the deep laceration of the lack of love for one another. The ointment of love that only the Holy Spirit can give is what we all must crave for today as we celebrate these all-important feasts of the Holy Spirit. First and foremost, I want us all to understand the Feast of Pentecost. Pentecost is from the Greek word Pentecoste, meaning 50th. The Pentecost Feast concludes Easter season. It is always 50 days after the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pentecost is the celebration of the person of the Holy Spirit coming upon the apostles, upon Mary, and all the first followers of Jesus who were gathered together in the upper room. A strong driving wind filled the entire room where they were gathered, and tongues of fire came to rest on their heads, allowing them to speak in different languages so that they could understand each other. Acts of Apostles chapter 2 verse 13. It was indeed a phenomenal experience. However, these same experiences renewed even in our days, meaning that same spirit that came down to indwell the apostles is freely available to us also. God is willing and always ready to pour out his spirit upon the earth. The spirit that overs on the earth at Bimisho is still very active. The spirit is our advocate, is our comforter. The spirit helps us to come to the depth of the knowledge of God. Today is rightly considered also as the birth of the church. Peter was said to have exalted those gathered about Jesus and over 3,000 repented of their sins and became children of God. I really wish this only would touch the heart of someone to value the redemptive mission of Christ furthered by the Holy Spirit. The happening in our first reading is very symbolic. It is also loaded with a lot of messages for you and I. The Holy Spirit came upon the apostles to bring about unity or love. Many persons gathered that day at the same thing meaning there was a unification of purpose in diversity. It is one thing that our world is yet to embrace. We think our diversity is indeed a separation. That negates in totality what the Holy Spirit stands for. Remember, the Holy Spirit is a member of a unified trinity in one, distinct but unseparated. Our faith teaches that there is only one God, one divine nature, one divine being. The three persons is still joined in apostatic union. Summarily, the identity of God is unity. So if we are children of God, how come this visible division and almost irreparable separation? We must take a clue from the analogy of one body as taught by our second reading. Though the body is made of many parts, it's a single unit. Because all these parts, though many, make one body. We are all baptized in one spirit. Jews as well as Greeks. Slaves as well as citizens. And one spirit was given to us all to drink. 
Can a message be clearer than this? Do not be an agent of division, okay? God's body must be united. He created all of us in this world. That oneness is genuine, is unique, and must not be corrupted. I charge every one of us to stay in love with everyone. Note again that the act of the apostles' experience brought the whole assembly of God to the truth. What is the truth? God is. Why do people fail to see the truth? Because they fail to see God. Yes, we may not have yet come to the full realization of the truth. That's fine. Jesus sends us the Holy Spirit to teach us the truth. John Gospel chapter 15 from verse 26 to verse 27. Chapter 16 from verse 12 to verse 15. Now that we have the Holy Spirit at our disposal, praise the Lord, to indwell our hearts and lead us to God, we must embrace the truth. The issue now is, is the Holy Spirit dwelling in you? Have you come to that deep realization of God such that nothing else matters? The depth of love He poured to save us is unspeakable. Are you willing to pour that same love on all His creatures? The Holy Spirit wants to fill the earth through you and I. We must be available to take up this task. Whoever the Spirit dwells in his or her heart will be a true witness because he or she is not only empowered by the various gifts of the Spirit, he will be bearing the various fruits of the Spirit as well. Therefore, such a person will be a thorough-going Christian. Let us dispose ourselves to the Holy Spirit today. Fill us up, O Holy Spirit, that we may live as true Christians, bringing your love to everyone. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mi mi mo, wagbe inu wa. Mi mi mo, pale wa. Mi mi mo, toma le sa.
Let's go.